So they all have their own group. These guys will actually end up writing a preseason article about the best four teams based on yeah. their These are just, this is the group that is you. Booth, you ready back there? Yeah. All right. Uh, Whenever you guys are ready, you guys can go to the lake in front of me. This being my first year, that's, that's absolutely been the biggest dilemma that I have, especially because I have a four-year-old or four-year-old, four-month-old baby at home. So, um, scheduling everything out ahead of time is very, very important. I have to have a calendar weeks ahead of time, just knowing so everybody's on the same page where I have to be for my basketball obligations and also things that can help help. So I would say that the planning part of that is definitely the most important. I think she's probably conflicted. I mean, she definitely, I mean, she's, she wants to support me, and, you know, because she knows that I'm passionate about sports and I'm passionate about coaching. But, um, you know, it is, you know, there's a conflict there. There's only so much time, and every time that I'm at basketball, it's time that I'm not at home, too. So, you know, it was, there was a conflict, but ultimately, I mean, she knows that um, you know, she wants to support the things that you know, make me happy. She knows that I enjoy coaching. So, yeah. Um, so, this is like your first season. Uh, how have you managed to get your team? There's a lot to that. We focused a lot on, um, obviously, the physical aspect is something that all coaches are going to focus on, you know, getting in shape and, you know, executing plays and sets like that. That's part of it. But I think, um, especially recently, we've been trying to focus as much on the mental aspect of it, okay? you know, that, that competitive nature instilled in everybody. Um, and the, you know, the sense of belief that, you know, we can play with whoever we're playing on the court, that we shouldn't feel intimidated by getting out of there. So I think that's been a big part of how we just you know the, the executing the drills or the you know, the physical workouts, but also trying to get that mental edge in terms of you know getting yourself ready to compete at a pretty high level. We'll go to the back first. Uh, what things do you need? What do you think needs to happen to make your team a playoff team this year? What needs to happen makes a playoff team. Specifically for us, um, our keys we're gonna have to defend with a whole lot of uh, consistent effort all the time. Defense is gonna be our biggest issue. I think we're somewhat limited in terms of our ability to score. So, if, you know, we're not going to be able to compete in games that get up into the 50s. we got to keep the games down a little bit lower in our, our scoring rate. Um, defending and with that, rebounding in particular for us has been a big focus in our offseason in terms of, um, you know, consistently, consistently coming up with defensive rebounds. We can't get beat on the offensive class. We just, we, we, the bottom line is we're just, we're not going to be able to put up as many points as some other teams. So if we're able to keep ourselves in game with a defense, that's going to be the biggest key. Another advantage I think we have for the playoffs is because of the PowerPoint system they have in basketball this year. We play almost, we play group four schools almost every week. And the way that the PowerPoints works out, we actually get an advantage from playing those bigger schools because the state rewards you for playing bigger schools. So um, if we can, we can stay consistent in our league schedule, that's going to help us in terms of the state rankings too, the state season for the playoffs. Who do you think sets the standard defensively? For our team, sets the standard defensively. Um, you know, it's hard to pick out one person. We, we, there's some of our, some of the girls definitely, um, they're, they're more defensive specialists than others, but we're really trying to create a culture of team defense. Everyone has to be on the same page all the time, um, especially because a lot of things we do require people to rotate around in different spots in the floor. So four out of the five of us all know, the, all know how to execute the defense, but that one person doesn't make that last rotation we get beat. So um, it's hard to say that one person definitely sets the standards as much as, you know, we have a real team approach on offense and on defense because it's so much of it incorporates everything. Yeah. Um, what if the majority of returning seniors did not come back to play this year? What if they had not? Yeah. Well, that hurts for a number of reasons. Obviously, you know, the older you get, the more you know physically developed you become. You get stronger, you get quicker, you know, you get faster, all those things. Um, but for us, particularly, we, we we lost five seniors last year. So if we hadn't had the returning seniors from this year, it would have hurt not just from a skill um, perspective, but equally, if not more so, from a leadership perspective. We're already really limited in terms of the growth of the team this year. We have varsity minutes experience as opposed to what we've had in the past. So if we hadn't had that core group come back up, that would have been a huge blow for us, scoring and leadership wise. So you can replace those seniors with the players here? Got to have, you know, we're, we're very young this year. We've got, um, you know, we'll project. 
check the start at least one sophomore, maybe two. We're gonna have uh, we're gonna have to have some freshmen even step step up to the varsity level. Um, you, you can't replace five leadership. It's just the, what they bring in terms of, like I said before, the leadership and the skills. You can't replace it. What you try to do is you try to tailor, you know, what you try to do with your team to what you have available to you. So we'll try to change some of the things that we've done to, to kind of suit what we have available to us right now, instead of trying to fit. I mean, there's, there's a lot of things to it. Uh, like I said before, we're relying more on defense to produce offense for us, also to keep us in games. Um, we've also changed it out some of our offensive sets. Um, some of the stuff we'll do is kind of used to create space so there's more opportunity for um, you know, some of the few returning players that we do have to make plays individually, <laughs> as opposed to a lot of things we do in the past with uh, you know, pick and roll kind of offense. We, we don't have as much of that kind of structure in place anymore. That is one thing I would say is uh, that's probably one of our advantages in that where you don't have you know a whole lot of people at the really you know, high level. We have a we have a deep group of girls who, who are all really solid basketball players. So we can we can run a lot of people in and out of the game without having a huge drop off. Whereas in years past, we probably didn't have as much depth. That allows us to do a lot of things. That allows us to get out and run, you know, transition offensively. That also allows us to play the kind of really aggressive defense that we want to play because you know if someone's getting winded, you you can come out for a 30 second, two minute, you know, whatever long the breather is, and know that there's going to be somebody coming in that's not going to have you know it's not going to cost us at that point in the game because we have we have that kind of depth, that ability to, to move you know piece that we players in different points on the floor. The other thing that we have is we have some versatile players. We have a number of girls who can play a number of different positions, so that we're not dead set into you know, point guard comes out, this person can only go in and play the corner, this person can only go in and play the three. Um, so we, since we have that versatility and we have a good set of numbers of those girls, that allows us to, um, you know, to exploit that as an advantage for us. Okay, yeah. What strategy do you see in the to ensure that your team will work together? That's something we try to focus on this year, too. Um, we're trying to do some things where it is hard too because you want practices to be competitive in the sense that we get the most out of practice when our players are trying to beat one another at something. And you guys all know how that is, whatever it is you're doing. If you're trying to, if you have some sort of, some sort of reward there, if you know you're trying to win something, you just know you're going to be more motivated to do it. But at the same time, we also want everybody to understand that we are playing for a common goal too. So we've done, we've done some things with, um, you know, get some more team building things. Um, trying to do some things to get more people to come out to the games. We're, we're trying to make it a culture of, at the school, not just on the team, but at the school, that's kind of, you know, we want people to say that it must be really cool to be a part of that team. So, you know, we're trying to make, trying to make some changes in the school here as much as on the team. So we want like to see that we want to be a member of the team. That means something. We have to earn that. So I think that kind of helps bring everybody together, too. Any other basketball stuff? What do you think about the mindset of your players Mindset of players. Uh, one of the things that we've tried to do also this year is we've had a little bit more going on in the off season than we've had before, in the hopes that when we step out on on the on the court in the game, we don't ever want to go into the game thinking that another team deserves to win more than us because they work harder than us. So a lot of things that we're trying to do instill is because our girls have been working extremely hard, we want them to believe that they deserve to win every game that they play because there's no one that's working hard. You guys, you know, you guys who are athletes now this year too. If you step out into the game, you just know that the other side has been just really getting after it all the time. You, you almost have a sense of, well, if I lose this game, it's almost like it's okay because I know that they, they just work way harder than us. If you know that, in, if you know in yourself that you work harder than the other team, you're never ever going to be okay with losing the game. And that doesn't mean you're not going to lose the game. And it doesn't mean it's the end of the world if you lose the game either. But it means you have that little extra intrinsic motivation of. I'm going to go out here and I'm going to do literally 
everything I can because I worked way too hard in June, July, and August to be losing basketball games in you know, December. So, so we try to create that um, that sentiment amongst some of the girls too. Uh, where have you coached before? Where have I coached before? Of all my coaching experience has been at Maine Ranch. Um, I was a volunteer assistant my first year teaching here, which was six years ago. The last four years 